Virtual campaigning has emerged as a tactic in the battle for the federal seat of Eden Monero ahead of the by-election in a few weeks from now. Our political reporter Eliza Edwards has spent the past few days speaking to candidates and voters. She joins us live now from Queanbeyan. And Eliza, what are the key issues in the seat? Well, Kieran, bushfire recovery is the major issue in this campaign, in particular mental health support for the people left traumatised by the black summer bushfires. The electorate of Eden Monero is in southeastern New South Wales, a region hit particularly hard by those blazes. Another issue voters have raised with me is mobile phone black spots outside major towns like Queanbeyan. So there are a lot of competing ideas of, on how to tackle these issues. There are 14 candidates in the running for the July 4 by-election, but the main contenders are Labor's Christy McBain, the Liberals' Fiona Copvoys, and the Nationals' Trevor Hicks. Their tactics on the hustings have been very different to a typical campaign. There's no kissing babies or even shaking hands in the age of coronavirus, and they've been forced to resort to some virtual campaigning campaigning in the age of coronavirus. Jenny, I won't shake your hand. No, that's okay. <laughs> Social distancing means more pavement pounding than usual. Getting out and about and meeting people, but on a one-on-one uh, -on -one basis. And with town hall meetings out of the question, the battle for the federal seat of Eden Monero has turned digital. I've had two telephone town halls so far, one with the PM. We actually ring people across the electorate and they have the opportunity to ask the PM or the minister questions direct. Some voters are wary about heading to the ballot box on July 4 in the middle of a pandemic. As long as you know there, there's really good management of it and so on um, and to have some supervision. I'll go early and vote. Pre-polling opens on Monday and it's a long ballot sheet for voters with 14 candidates in the running for the ultra marginal seat. The two front runners are Labor's Christy McBain and Liberal candidate Fiona Copvoys, who came within 1,700 votes of snatching the seat last May, but coy on whether Eden Monero was overlooked by the government at the general election. You can always have more money, you can always have more resources. The by-election was triggered by the resignation of Labor's Mike Kelly. At the outset, the government looked set to make history by becoming the first incumbent power to win a seat off the opposition at a by-election in 100 years. But that was before the coalition's high-profile contenders pulled out in spectacular fashion. The polling showed that I could win, but sometimes in this game you let ego get in the way of good decisions. That type of white anting, yeah, absolutely, is disappointing. Has it overshadowed the campaign? Not at all. The Liberal candidate says she's focused on rebuilding her electorate, left traumatised by the black summer bushfires. After you've had fires, floods, an ongoing drought and COVID-19, that is what we need to do. That has to be our focus. We have to rebuild. Central to her pitch is forcing quicker action on fire recovery from inside the government tent. I'd have loved the recovery and the clean-up of buildings to be faster. COVID-19 on top of it, that's been a are complicated because what that's meant is that a lot of the supports that were there, they had to be withdrawn. And so now we're looking at getting those back in again. Labor argues it's too little too late for the people of Eden Monero. It's an electorate that's really hurting, an electorate that actually needs a really strong voice in Canberra uh, because they feel like they've been forgotten. That's why I'm running, to make sure no one in Eden Monero is forgotten. Nationals candidate Trevor Hicks came late to the race introduced by the Nationals' leadership at an awkward press conference in which John Barillaro was forced to stand next to the man he labelled a failed leader in this leaked text exchange. To feel threatened by me clearly shows you have failed your team and failed mm. as a leader. You will never be acknowledged by me as our leader. You aren't. You never will be. Do you stand by Close that mobile message? reception's working, eh? Yeah, <laughs> good work. Good work. <laughs> Both give me a lot of support and um, they've only increased my chances. Despite the big personalities, it's the big issues weighing on voters' minds. Funding for, I mean, it's a state government issue. Uh, local hospitals, mental health services in particular. With the region left reeling from the prolonged drought, the summer fires and now coronavirus, the mental health of residents is also a focus for candidates. The government this week announced an extra $24 million for headspace centres across Australia, including this one in Queanbeyan. But Labor says it's still not enough. There's still a six-month wait list to access headspace in Bega. Uh, there is no yes. Um, service at all. So mental health will play a, a huge priority for, for many people across Eden Monero. Another priority identified by frustrated residents. We've lived out of town for about 10 years 
and um, our coverage is really poor. I can feel their pain. I'm going to be knocking on doors, making sure there's more towers and less black spots. More door knocking and elbow bumps to come in the final three weeks on the hustings. And Eliza, as you, as you covered in that report there, we know the bushfires had a big impact on Eden Monero. The candidates, the main candidates, have different ideas as to the way the recovery should be managed. Yeah, that's right. Recovery is really on the forefront of the minds of voters and candidates. Uh, Labor's Christy McBain wants to see more streamlined payments to victims, whereas the Liberal candidate Fiona Copvoy says there needs to be better management of hazard reduction burns ahead of the next fire season. The management of fuel loads and prescribed burns will be the focus of Royal Commission hearings when they resume next week. And Kieran, I'll have more reports on that particular issue from the electorate on Saturday. Eliza, I appreciate it. Thanks for that reporting from Eden Monero and more coverage as we head into.